Today's guest was in thousands of retail stores, and due to low margins and other issues, he completely changed his strategy to focus on direct-to-consumer, including national TV, and stopped doing any brick-and-mortar sales. Since then, his sales and profits have skyrocketed. He shares the full story in our interview today. Are you looking for new ways to make your sales grow? You've tried other podcasts, but they don't seem to know. Harvest the growth potential of your product or service as we share stories and strategies that'll make your competitors nervous. Now, here's the host of the Harvest Growth Podcast, John LeClaire. I'm really excited today to welcome back a previous guest, a close friend, and a good long-term client of ours, Ethan Woods. He's the founder of Grillbot. And if you've been a listener of the show for a long time, or if you've looked back in our archives, you'll recognize Ethan by his name and his product for sure. So he was actually on episode 11, four years ago of our show, one of our very early ones, where he talked about the launch, the early days of the business. And today we're going to do a bit of a catch up. So what's happened over the past four years, the business has been very successful, has grown and been a lot of fun, frankly, in many ways. So we're going to talk about that success and really what's driven it over the past few years. Um, and get into the story of the product itself as well. Um, tons of great stories. Ethan's always a, a fun guy to talk to. So I know you're going to love this interview. Ethan, welcome to the show today. Thank you, John. And I appreciate you having me back on after all these years. It's good to see you again and, and catch up on everything. So thank you. Absolutely. So first of all, for the, for those that aren't familiar, that maybe didn't hear our podcast a few years ago, let's talk first about the product before we jump into the marketing. So if you could just describe for our audience, what is the Grillbot? How does it work? Grillbot is, uh, based on the name, you can almost guess it yourself, but it's a robot that cleans your barbecue grill. Um, you know, problem solved, so to speak. And uh, I, I created this, invented it almost a decade ago and have been um, marketing and selling it for a number of years now. And it and it continues to grow and it's very exciting for me, but basically it's a push button, one and done, set it and forget it device that cleans any type of barbecue grill. And it really is that easy. It's amazing. I've been using one ever since we started working together several years ago and it's lasted. I mean, I still have my original one. I have my I've original using... one. From... Yeah. Really? That's <laughs> awesome. That's awesome. And yeah, quality is fantastic. But just to visualize a little bit for the audience, essentially, you literally just hit a button with a timer on it, to close your grill, and it it runs around scrubbing. You can set a timer for it, et cetera. And it's quiet, but it does a, an amazing job at cleaning your grill so you don't have to, taking yeah, away that elbow heat grease. Resistance, heat resistant up to 250 degrees, so you can put it on before you grill or, or after it. Just turn off the flame. It'll, it'll uh, clean a hot or cold grill. Picture it as a little uh, mini Roomba for your grill. That's yeah. how people describe it, a little vacuum cleaner, but uh, but it doesn't vacuum, it scrubs, and it's very robust and very powerful, and I spent over three years engineering it to withstand the rigors of a hot, greasy grill specifically. Uh, so, uh, you know, I'm very proud of the product. I stand by it uh, 100%, and we have hundreds of thousands of, of very happy customers. Yeah. If you're and if you're curious again as a as a listener, check out the website grillbots with an S on the end. So grillbots.com. You'll see a video right at the top of the page. And in literally a second, you'll understand exactly how this works. If you don't, just from us talking about it, you'll see some visualizations. And I love when I looked at the website, it's one of the very few videos where I'm actually in the background. So we shot a video for TV years ago that's still running and doing well. And I could see me as kind of an extra sitting at the table. I don't, I don't get a lot of uh, those moments in the sun. I'm usually behind camera. So it's kind of funny as I see myself on your website, but um, again, a great way to see the product and see it in action see how it works. And I was going to interrupt and say, enjoy it while it lasts because we're about three weeks away from launching a brand new website. It's been long overdue. So I'm not sure if you're in the background in the next one. We'll have to see. <laughs> so please, and our listeners go visit right away. If you want to see me, I'm sure you do <laughs> in the background. That's funny. So let's talk about marketing. So you talk about a new website you're doing. Um, what else though? Uh, really, what has been driving success for the business today? So we'll talk about how it's changed over the years, but what is, what's currently working at a great year last year and going into this year as well. So what's, what's working for your business today? Well, sure. Uh, last year was by far our best year ever. And it, it really is bar none TV commercials. They work really well for this type of product. It, it's highly demonstrable. So people want to see it in action. And we're able to demonstrate that in, in 30 second and, and 60 second spots on TV that we uh, showcase all over the country, basically, on uh, the cable TV networks and so on. Uh, that has been the driver for 80% uh, of our sales. 
And it's interesting, you know, we've been with you on this journey, a part of it, right? So this, you've, you've got the, of course, the done the product and all the hard work, right? But we've been part of the TV journey and it's been a lot of fun. One really interesting thing is I always talk about how the traditional TV spot still today that is the workhorse that works the best is a two minute spot. But we learned fairly quickly on with your campaign for you, the one minute does better. And it's one of those things like TV, like any form of marketing, it just takes some optimization, some learnings, and every campaign is going to be a little bit different. Once we figured that out though, we're off, off to the races. As you said, it's been working very well. And even a shorter campaign or a shorter spot, a 30 second spot works, which is not normal. I think in part because the, the product's been around for a while, brand awareness is higher. It's later stage than a brand new launch for sure, but those do continue to work really well. Another question we often get is about longevity. So how long TV lasts, right? Are they kind of one and done? And if you think about old school TV infomercials, kind of the cheesy as seen on TV yeah. products, right? I say cheesy with cheesiness with all the love in the world because for the right product, we love it, right? And it makes sense. But when you've got a brand, a premium product that you're really building behind it, you can build longevity. The cheesy stuff, the gadgets, gizmos come and go, right? And they can, I would say, squeeze all the revenue out in a couple of years and be done with it, move on to the next one. That's kind of the old TV right. model, but you've used it really well to build a brand that's been around for, for years. And like you said, still growing. And it's definitely uh, uh, walking a fine line because it's not a cheesy product. It, it costs over a hundred dollars, as you know, yep. and yep. and it's a quality product. So we don't want to portray it as some sort of gimmicky item that's going to fade away. And so we've been pretty successful at really demonstrating that the, that we're here to stay and that the product is is uh, robust and, and long lasting. And you're going to use it for many many years to come. And that's what we're seeing in the marketplace. I guess just like um, just like I bring them up, but R R Roomba and those other automatic vacuum cleaners, they're not going away. People are going to want to push a button and sweep their floors. I have right. a couple of them actually, you know, in, in my house. And so it's a kind of the same thing, I think, with Grillbot. Once you realize that you can press a button and get away with from that dirty hassle work that people don't like to do uh, and it's effective, it's not going to go away. Absolutely. And I'm glad you also clarified the premium nature of, of the product and of a TV spot. Ultimately, a lot of people think that, okay, infomercials are always cheesy because that they only very narrowly look at a bucket of TV spots, but yours, I would call, you know, it's really a direct response TV spot. It has the same benefits, but it doesn't feel like the, it's more premium, right? It feels more premium yeah. to reflect the brand, to reflect the product. And that's why it sells and, and really builds. You don't want that hard so sell on something that's more expensive. You want to exactly. just showcase the product, feature its highlights, uh, and I think also to speak to the 60 second versus two minute spots, the simplicity of this product and the, uh, how you demonstrate on TV speaks for itself. So we can say a lot in half the time. Uh, Agreed. Whereas some products require, I guess, a little more explanation or showing more benefits to it. People get the benefits of, of hands-free grill cleaning pretty quickly. Absolutely. I totally I agree. I do. <laughs> <laughs> so how would you say your business is is different today than it was back in the early days? Wow. Well, back in the early days, uh, when we first met and even before that, I was selling to everybody. I was selling to small mom and pop stores, regional chains, and the largest retail chains in the country. And I had to learn the hard way that that's a terrible business model, uh, especially if you're just starting out in this business and you don't know anything about how to conduct business with major retailers. Um, it was not a good experience for me. Um, they basically lie, cheat, and steal <laughs> yeah. and will tell you anything. It doesn't matter what the contract says. Um, almost every single retailer, I don't care of the size, has Amazon accounts, eBay accounts, and they are reselling your products anywhere they can. And, and it was a big eye opener to me. Um, and what it does is it floods the market with product and forces the price down to a point where it's not profitable. So when I first met you, I was doing business with all these major retailers. I was shipping containers around the world. And I decided that um, that I had enough of not uh, of losing sleep. I uh, literally yeah. couldn't sleep at night. It was a very stressful time. So I fired everybody, all the big and small. I uh, stopped shipping around the world. I stopped all of them. And I decided I was just going to sell to um, uh, direct to consumer. In fact, I'm about to turn down the largest retailer in Canada. Uh, mm -hmm. They have 1,100 stores. They want to launch it there and I'll do better on my own direct to, direct to consumers. So that's the big, that's the biggest change is selling direct to consumers now 100% versus in the past selling to everybody. Yeah. 
And the world is different too. I think, you know, your business has matured and also the, the world has changed where people are, are much more amenable to buying direct consumer to consumer today, even than five years ago, let's say, for example. So it's, it is a trend that I see in a lot of businesses moving away. And it's interesting for you to say, it is so hard to turn down business, right? Turn down revenue, but you've got to understand your core strategy as a yeah. business and stick to it. Yeah, I, I made this decision about three and a half, four years ago, and that whole year was pretty scary. I mean, we, yeah. we turned down tons of business and closed accounts and and refocused our energies into TV commercials and social media and direct, direct to consumer. Uh, but like I said, last year has been our best year ever. And so, and this year I'm expected to do even better. Um, and yeah, onward and upward. Fantastic. So right now we've got one core product, the, the, the grill bot. Uh, what are your what are your strategies for growth now over the next few years to continue to grow in this business? So I'm, um, you know, my passion really is more towards inventing, not running a company. And so yeah. I've been working on half a dozen different prototypes of different inventions, some related to the grilling industry, some completely unrelated to it. Some are robotics in nature, some are not. And you can only do so much at any given time. So I've narrowed it down to two that I'm working on. I, unfortunately, I can't really describe them right now. But uh, I'm in my eighth or ninth round of, of prototyping with the engineers, getting very close, hopefully. Um, and if I don't launch this summer, it'll certainly be uh, a launch for the Christmas holiday or the holiday season. Yeah. <clears throat> would be the goal. These things always take longer uh, than anticipated. Uh, you know, you think you're getting a final prototype, you get it, you, you, you use it, you look at it, and there's so many things wrong, and it's back to the drawing board, new materials, new shapes, new things, uh, new functionality. And so, yeah, uh, it takes time. It's a lot of trial and error. Yeah, for it's sure. And if, the vision to somebody else. True. And going through that back and forth until you get the product perfected, so you're excited mm -hmm. and everybody else will be, which is what happened with Growbot. As you mentioned, it took years to develop it, and now it's been essentially this, you know, improvements, yes, but that core product has been so successful without major having to do major changes across the years. I have, Ethan, as you shared with me what these products are, I won't divulge to our audience because we want to bring them out, but please visit growbots.com in the future and, and watch for those in the coming months. You're going to love these products. I'll pay attention for them too as they, as they come into the market. Yeah. And that is a great, you know, talking about the strategy, the reason for bringing out new products, it's A, it's fun if you're an inventor at heart, like you are, Ethan, but also it's a chance to really grow, not just a product, but grow it into a brand. You've got automatic benefits from hundreds of thousands of customers over the years that have bought and love Grillbot as a product. They make it, they're warm leads as we call them, right? So they're they're much easier to sell a new product to, especially if it's in that same line, if it's in the grilling space in your category, for example, it's a great way to grow that brand, build up the premium nature and, and really build up the value of your business over time as well. Yeah. And that's the ultimate goal. Of course, I want to bring up the value of the business. I want to uh, become more mainstream and not be a one hit wonder. You yes. Know, yeah. Right now. And ever since I've launched, it's been a sort of a one hit wonder. And so it's crucial. This is the right time for it to start introducing new innovative products that nobody's seen before. Absolutely. I'm excited well, about this. Absolutely. Yeah. Likewise. Uh, Ethan, are there any resources that you recommend to our audience that have been helpful to you in, in your journey in growing this business? It's it's much like what we're doing now, talking to uh, like-minded people who, yeah. who think in this space, who, who are uh, innovative and can think outside the box. I don't have a specific mentor. I do a lot of research on my own. I love reading and and investigating uh, how you know anything from the proper way to uh, handle patent protection, not just in the U.S. but around the world, certification. Many times when I'm conducting business, people ask me if I'm a lawyer because I read the fine print. Yeah, and not. <laughs> um, but so I would say educate yourself as much as you can. There's a there's you know a, an enormous amount you can glean from the internet. Obviously, talking to people in the business and out of the business who have some experience in the area that you want to pursue is very helpful. Uh, but be careful. You know, there's a lot of sharks out there. A lot of people who are either envious or jealous or want to see you fail, or there, there's there's a negative aspect to it as well, which has been a little disappointing. And uh, you, you have to learn along the, the way to take uh, take the lessons and the advice with a grain of salt. Agreed. Yeah, absolutely. And sometimes as a business owner, inventor, it's it feels lonely, right? It's You are at the helm, you're making decisions. And you know sometimes they're good, sometimes they're bad as you learn along the way, right? But 
But what's, I think, also one benefit of reaching out to a network and finding the right people carefully, right? Vetting them, et cetera. But you, you, start, to, you start to not feel as alone. You realize, realize others have gone through some similar issues and you can learn from those as well. And just walk, watch out for the sharks as you do so. But there's well, a lot of information. I'm a New Yorker, to... so we don't trust anybody. <laughs> True. <laughs> well, is there anything I didn't ask you that you think would be helpful for our audience? Uh, I would say if, if you really, uh, whether you're an inventor or you just want to start a brand new business, uh, I would say the, the biggest mistakes I made were going it alone. Uh, I didn't take on partners early on. And by the time I launched the product, and was in a better position to take on partners, all of them wanted the upside and none of them wanted the risk. And I've had about 15, 20 offers over the years to partner with me, to buy the company, whatever. And in every instance, it was the same scenario where they get no risk, but all the reward. And after spending so much money, uh, my own dollars, bringing this to where it is now, I'm not going to hand over the farm unless they bring something to the table that's a that's almost a certain guarantee. And if it's not going to be cash on the table, it better be uh, an outlet into a major distribution or something uh, of value yeah. uh, that would catapult us into the next level. So be careful launching on your own. Uh, the dollars and the budget, triple it, quadruple it. Uh, do anything you can to increase what you think it's going to cost you because I guarantee you it will cost a lot more money than you're expecting it to. Um, so those were we're sort of my parting gifts to you right now. <laughs> <laughs> That's great advice. And it is, you know, a lot of people that have product businesses look for the eventual exit, right? Acquisition type yeah. strategy. And that can be a great way to bring value out of your business. But as you mentioned, so many of those and other types of partners may come in and do a, a deal where it's an earn out, for example, right? Where they want to we'll share profits with you long term. But in the meantime, you're out of the business, you have no control, et cetera. So and they can go looking for that value. cash. You don't know what they're do yeah, that. exactly. Looking for that upfront cash for all the work and, in, and time and money. You put it in the business. That's that's great advice. Well, I do want to encourage our audience, please visit grillbots.com. Check out Ethan's line of products. It's it's amazing what he's done with this. Check out the business. Uh, you, you know, if you don't have one already, if you grill really ever, you're going to love this product. How um, easy it makes the cleanup process before or after you grill every time. So you no longer have to think about it. And you've got a clean surface to now grill on without the effort. Well, Ethan, thanks again for your time. I really appreciate it today. John, I really appreciate it. I'm excited to work with you again and shooting some brand new Grobot commercials and getting them out on the, on the uh, airwaves as soon. So Likewise. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Likewise. Very excited. Be sure to visit grillbots.com to learn more. Also, be sure to check out harvestgrowth.com to see other episodes we've recorded. And if you like this episode, you want to learn how you can profitably grow your consumer product business, please subscribe to our show, or you can set up an appointment right from our website to speak with a member of the Harvest Growth team in a free consultation to learn the process that has worked for hundreds of businesses like Grillbot since 2007. 